Hey yo and hello, it's the Revolutionary Simply Kish, and you know what time it is. It is June 1st, which means we are officially in... June 1st! No, 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 what it really means is that the weather is finally starting to get hot. Hopefully. School is finally getting out. If it isn't already. And it's finally time for us to go to the beach, party, and relax. And at the very least, we're going to be hearing songs about going to the beach, partying, and relaxing. Yes, the time of summer jams is finally among us. And just in case you don't know what a summer jam is, I'm going to get you the brief lowdown right now. For me, I have that happy feeling. I have that love feeling. I have that excited feeling. And then, there's summer. Let me just clarify real quickly, I'm not going to be counting down the top summer songs of all time. That is, songs about summer, because if that was the case, I'd probably be putting Summer of 69 in slots 10, all the way to 1. Because that's probably the only summer song I could think of right now. I'm also not going to be covering the top 10 summer hits, or rather the songs that have reached their peak during the summertime. If that was the case, I'd be putting the Somebody That I Used To Know and the Get Luckies all the way at the top. Because those were the songs that I was alive for and actually lived through, so there's a little bit of bias there. So without further ado, it is my top 10 summer jams. Number 10. So I'm pretty sure that this song was a summer song during its peak during the summer of 2008. And I'm not saying that this was a bad song, no, not by any means. What I am saying is that this song made it onto this list on some sort of technicality. This song made it onto its list because of one line and one line only. In case you don't know me and how I like to jump from musical genres to genres, let me tell you really quick. I like to jump from music genres to genres. I want to expand my musical library. The best way I can do that is if I jump from genres to genres. But if there was a home genre per se, I like the alt-rock sounds with a little bit of pop punk thrown into it. There's just something about the instrumentation and the music behind it. And I'm also a huge fan of the voice that usually accompanies it. I'm especially a sucker for those songs that use octave jumps to emphasize the first verse and the second verse, first chorus and the second chorus. I know it's not that happy up-tempo party song that you would think would associate with a summer song, if I was going for that, I probably should have used the single that Boys Like Girls released prior, same album, The Great Escape. Now that is a good summer song for those who need help thinking of a summer playlist this year. And even though this song made it onto this list because of a line, song isn't actually a bad choice for a summer song, I would think so. Because even though that we associate summer with sun and hot, we do have such thing as summer nights. It's a nice change of pace is what I'm trying to get at. You can go out on the porch, drink a few beers with your friends, it's just... I think it's a good song. It has a good place. Now that I think about it, I wish that I listened to more Boys Like Girls. Add them to the never-ending list of musicians and or artists that I wish I was into, but I guess I'm not into just yet. But until then, Boys Like Girls, you will always be the soundtrack of my summer. I mean thunder. You'll always be my thunder. Number 9. I'm gonna introduce you to my high school crush really quick. Let's call her uh, High School Crush. High School Crush was really into the new wave indie rock sort of scene. And because I'm a creep and I stalked her on Facebook, she indirectly introduced me to a lot of cool artists. The Cure, Silver Sun Pickups, Metric. She posted a lot of songs and bands that I thought were really cool. Honestly, they were kind of fads to me. I grew into them, I grew out of them. There was this one song that she posted and I knew instantly that I liked it. What I didn't know was that six months later, this band would be rocking mainstream. And what I didn't know was that six years later, I'd still be rocking out to this band. When the rest of the crowd were singing, oh, oh, I want some more, because of my high school crush, I was getting some more. Oh, how I wish that was true. There's a lot of Neon Tree song that I like. Some of them I like even more than this song. 1983, Teenager in Love, Everybody Talks. But when it comes to summer jams, give me some of that Michael Jackson vibe. I want some more weekend in my life. And at the time of recording this, Neon Trees just released a new song, Songs I Can't Listen To. Oh my gosh, that song is that song is so real. Like, three albums later, onto their fourth one. This is a really good song. I'm definitely gonna be listening to that song a lot this summer even though I don't think it's gonna have too much mainstream success. The competition field this year is just heavy, Woo! 
But weekend, Neon Trees, there it is. You know what? I'm actually not sure if I started listening to this song during the summer. Oh well, let's just pretend for the weekend that I started liking this song during the summer. Number 8. So let me just reiterate that this is my list, my summer jams. I say this because the next song has absolutely no summer association with it. I don't think it was released during the summer, I don't think it became a hit during the summer, but you know what? It's my list. So here it is. I have several different songs, I have several different associations with me that pinpoint me to a specific point of my life. But this song by Eric Pride's Call On Me has one association and one association only. In order for you to fully grasp this, let me take you back to the summer of 2012. It was definitely, undeniably, the hardest summer of my life. For all you full-time students who work full-time, I don't know how you guys keep doing it. I barely handled it for 10 weeks. You guys are the real troopers. Keep holding on, keep pushing through, it'll all pay off. I was also going through some really stressful moments with some personal internal manners. Oh, and I also went blonde, but I'm gonna let Simply Shady handle that one really quick. And to help me get through the most stressful point of my life, I had a nice cast of people surrounding me that just helped me push through it. And for my friends, if I had to choose one song to represent what I went through with my friends, I choose this song for that. Shout out to Mad Hatter. But if this song has played such an emotional, such a deep portion of my life, why is it so low on the list? Well... This song is downright terrible! This song is just so bad! Does he say anything else? Call on who? Call on you? No, no, call on me. Do what to you? By you? Next to you? With you? I... just... Oh my goodness! I think there's a reason why this song only has one association with me, and that's because I don't want it to have any other association with me. I don't believe I ever listened to the song in its entirety. I have to shut it off within a minute, minute and a half, because I'm already pulling my hair off by the second of that high-pitched Eric cries. This song got stuck in the summer of 2012 for a reason, and I hope it stays in the summer of 2012 for that exact reason. It's just such a monotonous, repetitive, call on me, drone, it's, it's ridiculous. I, I honestly think the only reason why the song became big between my friends is because we were making fun of the music video. Without that music video, people would realize that this song would be exposed for the junk that it really is. This song is downright terrible and I hate it. I hate it so much. I love it so much. I like this song. Number 7. So Rock Band was a huge part of my early college life. Me and my friends would meet several times a week and we'd always set aside time to make sure we played this game. We all come from different genres, different tastes in music, but there's a handful of songs that we all unanimously agreed on and we use those songs to sort of bond together and use it to end our set list. And if you were to ask those guys what that song was, most of them would cite Yellow Card's Ocean Avenue and pinpoint that as the pinnacle of our rock band experience. I, on the other hand, am opting for a different jam. Run, baby, run. Don't ever look back. Yes, I may not like this song as much as I like Ocean Avenue, but Check Yes Juliet has two summers for me. In the summer of 2008, that was when me and my sister used to listen to it a lot. In the summer of 2011 is when me and my friends played a lot during Rock Band. So two summers. How do I not put it on this list? For a long time, I thought I was the only one who actually knew this song. I was actually slightly embarrassed because my little sister introduced this song to me. And I'm just so used to every time I jump onto a fad of my sister's that I'm allowing myself to be engulfed in these girly things. I was eight. How was I supposed to know that my favorite band's not supposed to be Backstreet Boys? But then when I got this song on Rock Band, I found out that one of my friends liked it and he wanted to play it. Then I found out a second friend liked it and he wanted to play it too. And then I found out that another friend and a totally different group of friends also enjoyed the song. And that's when I realized this song's pretty good. I should be proud of it. You know what? Put We The Kings right next to Boys Like Girls on that long, never-ending list of bands and or artists that I wish I was into, but I guess I'm just not into. But for now, Juliet, for this song, for summer, I will indeed check yes. Number 6. 
The summer of 2013, musically speaking, was undoubtedly a year of throwbacks. While everyone was riding Robin's dick and getting lucky to Bruno Mars' special treasure, I was into a different throwback. I was working in the games department at the local amusement park that summer, and as all you people who work retail know, especially if you work during the holiday season, playlists could get kind of annoying real fast. Some days it wasn't as bad because the park would have a playlist and I'd hear a song maybe three to five times a day. But the biggest game in the park, the three point challenge, they were so big they had their own speakers, their own PA system, they had their own playlist. And when I would work one of the games right next to it, I would hear the songs three to five times an hour. Of course two years later I don't remember much of that playlist. I do remember two songs from that list though, probably because they're the only two songs that I like. Hashtag Beautiful, Mariah Carey, and The Way, Ariana Grande. And while I could have used hashtag beautiful for this slot, I opted for the way because while I liked hashtag beautiful, it's not even my favorite Mariah Carey song. Maybe once she releases All I Want for Summer is You, we'll talk about it. But until then, I'm gonna go with new Mariah Carey because two years later, I feel pretty comfortable saying that this is my favorite Ariana Grande song. I just really liked her rhymes, I liked her harmonies, I liked her vocal runs at the end, but the real deal maker for me was the little breakdown before the pre-chorus. And I really don't want to talk about it, but since I'm giving you a mini review on the song, I feel like I have to talk about the no mind and nameless presence that is Mac Miller. Every time I hear this song, honestly, I forget that he's even here. The way I see it, he's more or less like a faucet. Yeah, every bathroom needs one, but you can or you can't use it. I'm not really gonna miss it if it's broken or not. Yes, this song called for that mediocre white boy rap at the beginning and maybe at the third verse slash bridge. But kudos to Ariana Grande for picking Mac Miller. Because his performance was so bland, it really added more oomph and glamour to Ariana's vocals. So Ariana Grande, I really liked the way you did that. Number 5. I don't really remember much about my childhood summers. It starts to get a little bit easier past my middle school years. Especially easier in high school because in high school I was sort of a band geek. I guess I am still sort of a band geek. But I was part of this Dixieland New Orleans jazz combo during my high school years. Captain Chop could test for that, he was there. And a lot of my high school summers did surround this Dixieland band. I know that jazz, especially the Dixieland version, isn't a genre that most people listen to. But you know what they say, one man's trash, one man's treasure. This song was the first song that we performed as a band that really centered around New Orleans. We played several better New Orleans standards. We played songs that I had more fun with, but I'm choosing Drop Me Off as my representation of my high school Disneyland summer years. And it became a standard that we like to play during our several festivals that we played at. Especially the bigger one that I'm thinking of, the Jubilee that we played every Memorial Day weekend. And since the end of May and the beginning of June is really when that summer feeling starts to kick off, I always picture the Jubilee as sort of my send off from school into the summer era. This song made it to my top 5 because those high school years truly personal to me. I honestly do not believe I'd be where I am right now without that band. I may have left my heart in the Bay Area, but go ahead and take the rest of me, drop me off, New Orleans. Number 4. This is the part of the list where I do nothing but embarrass myself now. You see, this next band may have been credible once upon a time, but you know what? I don't even think anything needs to be said. I'm at a payphone, trying to go home all of While this may not be my favorite Maroon 5 song, not by a long shot, it's definitely my favorite of the new Maroon 5 era, which I like to call the Adam Levine Project. Payphone is actually a really bad song. The music video is terrible, Adam Levine's falsetto is still pretty annoying, and we have arguably the worst guest rap of all time. So why do I like this song? Maybe it gets the benefit of the doubt for following the atrocity that was moves like Jagger. It might be the piano or the melody. It also might be the lyrics. Hold on, let me look at the lyrics really quick. All these fairy tales are full of... What? One more what kind of love song? Listen, 
Those are some of the most lazily written, mindless lyrics that I've ever heard. Actually, I'll listen to their next four singles. It's not the worst thing they've ever written. It's not the worst lyrics I've ever heard. Those lyrics are so blunt. They're so terrible. I don't know how anyone likes it, except that I love it. I love those lyrics. Sometimes it's not all about that summer love. Summer love sometimes fades. When you see those summer couples just holding their hands, getting all mushy and gushy in front of your face, reminding you that you're alone and nothing's working for you in this world, you just want to throw it in their face. You want, you just, you, crazy. It drives you crazy. Maroon 5, you've knocked it right on the head. And then there's a clean, censored version. All these fairy tales are full of it. One more stupid love song? No, 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 no. That's not how it works. But that exactly is how I feel sometimes. One more fucking love song? I am gonna be sick. Cause guess what? Those fairy tales are full of shit. New Maroon 5, you guys got it going. Keep it up. And you know what? I listen to Sugar. You guys are sounding more and more like a real band with every single that you guys release. Like Never mind. Welcome back, Adam Levine Project. Number three. The next song on this list is called Summertime, and I'm sure that tells you a whole lot of nothing because there are so many songs called Summertime. There's a jazz standard called Summertime, there's a Fresh Prince classic called Summertime, and of course the Segway song you've been seeing throughout this countdown, Summertime by Aaron Carter and the Baha Men. I'm really surprised that AC didn't make this list now that I think about it. Just the other day, I listened and watched that music video for the first time in over a decade, and my face was literally like this the entire time. That song was so bad, it was hilarious how bad that song was. I gotta give to them in this aspect. Aaron Carter and to the extent the Baham Men, at least they were in their prime when they released that song. It was not in sync. it was not BSB, it was the NKOTB that stole the boy band slot on this list. I can name all the members of NSYNC and the Backstreet Boys off the tip of my tongue. For example, we got Brian Song, Nick Cannon, AJ Lee, Kevin Federline, and my favorite, Howie Mandel. And for NSYNC, you got Justin Time, JC Penny, Lance Armstrong, Uncle Joey, and of course, Chris Rock. I can't name anyone off of New Kids on the Block. Mark Wahlberg, I think, was on there. I have no idea why I like this song by New Kids on the Block. Can you even call them New Kids on the Block anymore? Are they even new? Are they even kids? These are the old men at the bar. Old men at the party. Old men on Facebook? Your dad is on Facebook. Your dad just joined Facebook and sent you a friend request. That's exactly what this song is. Are these guys going through a midlife crisis? This doesn't make any sense to me. I tried to talk myself out of putting this song out because honestly, I don't get embarrassed too often, but this came close. I almost got embarrassed by this, but when I think of summer songs, I think of this song. I started humming this song. The word summer is in its title. And you know what? That part about me being embarrassed, I take that back. I'm not embarrassed. This song makes me happy, and that's all that should matter, right? Old kids at the bar, I will think about you during this summertime. Whoa. Number 2 So if I haven't already lost all musical credibility in your eyes, let me just, hold on, it's, it's summer, just, just take it all, it's gone, it's, whatever, it's gone, it's gone, I'm done. Oh, did we miss these guys. When it comes to HSM, I look back on the first and the third one mostly with nostalgia. Especially the third one since they played one of their songs at my junior prom, junior prom day if you're watching. But I can legitimately and honestly say that I enjoyed the second one more than I should. The first time I watched it was more so out of curiosity because I already watched the first one. The second time I watched it is because I thought some of the songs were catchy and I wanted to rewatch some of those scenes. The third time I watched it is because I was bored and it had nothing to do. Yes, I watched this film multiple times, no shame. But for this song, All For One, this was the song that they played as their final send-off, their ending song, the grand finale. The whole movie led up to this. And I like this song for a few reasons. First off, I like it a lot better than We're All In This Together, the previous movie's big group number. Because We're All In This Together seems kind of tacky and cheesy. Don't get me wrong, All For One is also tacky and cheesy, if not even more cliche. Okay, let me paint the picture for you. The final scene is a pool party. 
for the employees at the country club. I was jealous of both the actors and the characters when I watched that scene. It just looked like they're having so much fun. There's just some sort of finality to it. Those kids partying by that pool to that song almost epitomizes the perfect setup for a summer. And of course, anything with my baby Vanessa Hudgens is just a frosting on the cake. And before we get to the big reveal, let's do a little bit of honorable mentions. Baseball is a summer sport, and the Oakland Athletics are my favorite team. And they play this song at the end of every Oakland A's victories at the Coliseum. And even though this season specifically they're trending to a summer that doesn't play the song too often, as long as it's the Oakland A's victory song, give me some cool in the game to fill my summer. Alright, you caught me, I couldn't help it. This song's just too good, this album is so good, this band's, this, it's, it's good. It's, I, I don't know what else to say, it's good. I've been saying this for weeks now, and what was once a bold statement a month or two ago is now just common knowledge. This song is peaking at the right moment. Walk the moon, shut up and dance, Summer Jam 2015. And now for the moment you've all been waiting for, here it is! Number one. If you've been keeping up with this channel, about a month ago we released a video Persona 4 Ultimax. And if you watched that episode, you probably knew what my top jam was this entire time. And in case you haven't watched it, why don't you go ahead and watch it real quick so that way you're on the same page as all of us. I'm even going to make it easy for you. I'm going to put a link to that video on the screen right now. So all you have to do is click. It's even going to be at that exact moment where I reveal that song. So go ahead, just click. It'll be Hey, looks kind of cute right there, right? Yeah, it's a cool picture. I mean, it only takes like 10 seconds. You guys should be back by Oh, you guys are back? All right, here it is. Yes, the song that started it all. I just remember the July 4th weekend. It was that part of the road trip when my mom's driving, the radio's going on, we're all kind of dozing off, sleeping in our own little world. The radio station that we're listening to had a summer mashup of the summer jams for that year. Half asleep, half awake, I was listening to this summer medley, and then this song came up, Edge of Glory, Lady Gaga. It was not the first time I heard that song during the summer, but for whatever reason, during that exact moment in the car, driving home, unexcited to face reality again and jump back into real life, hearing that song enter my ears, I don't know what happened. That summer feeling that I was describing, I, I, I felt it. I felt summer, not not happy, not excited, summer. I felt that summer feeling. That was the first time I was able to hear a song and say, this is the summer jam for me. This is my summer song. I've had several songs on this list alone that cite summers before 2011. Yes, the song was great. Yes, that sax solo was definitely a huge factor. Clarence Clemens solo just blew it out of the water. But it's kind of like when you're in fourth grade and you kiss your crush underneath the little cherry tree. Yeah, it feels nice, but you don't really know why it feels nice. You just kind of go, <laughs> get the butterflies maybe. And then as you get a little bit older, maybe in junior high, you start to realize, oh, it's hormones. Oh, I'm starting to feel physically different. And you start to understand that's why I kind of felt weird and kind of funny at the same time. You go into high school and then you start to develop a little bit more. You go into college, young adult life, you develop even more. What I'm trying to get at is, yes, I've had summer moments before Edge of Glory, but it was Edge of Glory when I realized what those were. And because of that, Edge of Glory, number one. So, what do you guys think about my list? Like it, love it, hate it, whatever, it's my list. What are some of your guys' summer jams? Let me know in the comments below. Did any of your jams make it? Did I totally miss the ball on this one? Let me know in the comments below. And as always, I was Simply Kish. Now I'm out. I wonder how long it's going to take for me to realize that I forgot a really important song and have to switch around my whole entire list. I give myself two months. Three months top. Whoops. And I can't wait to see what my buddies all think of me. Just imagine how much cooler I'll be in summer. The cold are both so intense. If you're not from New Orleans, let me hear you scream. Woo!